Um, so this is a great parallel mm -hmm. where you look at the game of comedy today mm -hmm. and you see how certain talents are representing comedians that aren't really telling jokes, mm -hmm. not really doing stand-up. Who do we blame? Do we blame the audience or do we blame the talent? And um. that parallel of you with Trump, where do we blame him? Yeah. You would blame the enablers. You always blame the enablers. I, I don't. I, I, people are like children, and they're gonna try to get away with what they can get away with. And if you let them, at some point, it's not their fault anymore. It's you. So uh, definitely, the audience, the enablers. You know. Because uh, that's where, like, for the game of like comedy right now, I just see that. Mm -hmm. Where I know people are mad, but you gotta think about a lot of these cats is trying to make. Yeah, they trying to make some money. I, I, I uh, <clears throat> you know, initially I used to be with the crowd, you know, say oh, those guys, you know, what I'm saying, but I, I'm, I'm completely different. When I went to a show of a particular social media uh, comedian that's like hot right now, and they gave, if I had to grade their performance, they did a three at best, but the crowd was eating it up, and I was saying to myself. I can see the immaturity in your act. You have no setup, no punchline. You, you're up there having a humorous conversation. You have no idea what you're doing. But I don't blame you. You're learning. The only way that we learn is when we got booed. Oh, that didn't work. And you had to go do something else. If they're eating it up and you're packing shows out, can't blame you. Can't blame. And, some, and in some respects, they're stealing. The young ones, they're, they're, they're social media, they're stealing. Because they don't have the material. And if the club owners are still booking them, and the fans are still packing the place. How can I blame them? They try to make money, you know. And some of them are young people uh, that didn't have anything, and out of nowhere they just put the phone in front of their face and they blew. You know, what I'm saying they got all kind of money and opportunity. I, they're not gonna listen, and they're just doing their thing, you know. So I don't blame them at all. Mm -hmm. Social media is coming in now, kind of like a back door. Yeah. To get the same amount of audience, where does where does your route? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm watching, I'm watching the social media people. I'm doing what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, the traditional route, I'm looking around me, and it's, it's all, it's on life support. It's on life support. So um, back in the day, people would develop talent. You know what I'm saying? You'd be, you, you be hot because it's happened to me. Even in my, in my career, it's happened where you go out there, you do a good show, and then somebody approach, hey man, I gotta get you to my club, man. You amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody does that anymore. Nobody really cares. There's no producers in the audience watching you. They're online. They're looking for who's the next hottest person with the following. You know what I'm saying? Um, so the game is different. You know, it's it's, it's weird. Uh, Lord help the ones that can't adjust. Cause uh, is there inspiration in Tiffany Haddish's uh, kind of story? Well, yeah. Because it, it just shows you it still could be done the regular way. And there's a few others other than Tiffany, you know, Laurel and a couple of others uh, out there who blew the tradition away, but it's less and less. It's less and less, so, you know. Like a lot more blowing up on social media. Yeah, I so mean. What does that look like? Is that like people stop? Because we had like, someone write a story on Comedy Hype mm -hmm. about like the open mic was dead and what they laid yeah. Well, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not a good friend of mine, and a good friend of yours too. He 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 preaches that here. Uh, I'm not gonna say that because I feel I'm old school. You still got. It's just like going to the gym. You got to get in there and practice. You gotta get in there and practice because I just feel like for your self respect, you can get, get online and do a funny video and you could blow up. But when you get on stage, especially if you started trying to do a traditional route, don't you feel stupid? You, you, you know you suck, but they like it, and you're just up there making money. When you want to try to be the best, try to get better, you know what I'm saying? So, um, the open mic's not dead. I just don't. I think you still should. There's a place for it. You know what I mean? Uh, now, the days of uh, seven days a week hitting open mics, you're, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. You're an idiot because you better get you better pull that phone out and do so and, and put some kind of content up up you know that hanging out on the scene and every night and you know which I love because I came up under that I love 
the, sh the, the, the beautiful part about being a comedian is after the show. When I get the fellowship with my with my partners and we talk, you know what I'm saying, laugh and joke. So I love that, but it, you know, uh, if you're doing it, because I, I used to do it. I was out every night trying to get better, hitting every mic I could, you know. If you have been doing this for over three years and you're still hitting the mics every, every night <clears throat> and it's not doing nothing, you're not getting better to the point to where you, you be too good to where they, they can't deny you, you need to rethink what you're doing cut your open mic time in half and split it with your phone you know what i'm saying with your computer you know trying to create you got to be a creator so